Well, welcome to Coffee with Vern, a time where we have intentional conversations about the gospel and we desire to talk about theological truth. Thanks for joining us. We hope you can learn and grow and be fed through this. Boker Tov, not really, <laughs> <laughs> but good afternoon slash good morning tomorrow if you listen tomorrow slash good evening because well, we are never, filming It never afternoon. posts in the morning anyways. This is true. I don't know. I always say good morning because we do it at 10, but hey, today we're doing it at 1.30. Yes. So, hey, how's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. Wow, this is slightly depressing slash slightly exciting. Yeah. We're finishing up Puritan series. Exciting. And season two. Season two is finishing. Yeah. Exciting. Both of the same. Taking off for the summer. Slightly depressing. Yeah. There's good and bad in it. Give us time to plan. Yeah, we get time to plan, but I'm gonna miss I'm gonna miss looking at you in <laughs> in the depths I mean, of your eyes. It's not like you are Right down the hallway. I know, but this is like, this is our moment. <laughs> you know, this is it. This is oh, the boy. Jesse James crew right here. Yeah. Oh, me. Well, this is the final episode of the Puritan series. So if you've enjoyed this series, you should let us know uh, because we want to do more church history series such as these. Puritan yes. month being maybe a yearly thing if we, yeah. if it catches on. Reformation month. That's happening. <laughs> That's happening. Okay. That's where I pull my strings and say we're doing it. But we would love to do more church history stuff. It's important mm-hmm. that you know history of the church. And so this has been a lot of fun for both of us. We've gotten to learn a lot. Oh, yeah. Um, we have fallen in love with some of these guys and their writings and definitely are tempted to spend lots of money. Oh, man. Yes. Daily. So much money. You more than me right now. Yeah. <laughs> because the Puritans were an area I had a decent amount of stuff on. And, yes, and I did not. And the Reformation stuff, I have, you had a decent amount. I have one Puritan book, and actually is written by the guy we're talking about today. <laughs> hey, yeah, I, you one-upped me on that one. I did. I Finally. don't have it. I don't have that one, but I do want it. Yeah. But yeah, we uh, it's going to be good. Yep. I'm in a side note. Jesse could give a... a whatever about what I'm about to say, but you know what? This is, this needs to be said. Does it? Yeah, it does. The metal concerts are back, Jesse. (laughs) There was an announcement today and I'm, I'm just, I'm ready to mosh to myself, but we're going to try to make this episode a little bit shorter. And here's why as well. (laughs) It's hot as sin in here. It is burning. Uh, Currently, I think it's close to 80 degrees in here. Yeah, I really do. If not yesterday, when I came up here to, get everything kind of st- i took all the books out of here and all it was 82 degrees up here yeah that's what i was so we're gonna try to be quick and to the point because if not there will be sweat dropping and yeah. you'll see it on my it, face it, yeah it, because the ac is broken it's not because we're trying to sweat box ourselves to wow death, but the I, ac is currently broken i got a full pot of coffee room. and i'm gonna be honest i don't know if i'm gonna even take a sip <laughs> it's so hot but yeah so, let's get into it summer edition yeah inside just as hot as the outside <laughs> sidebar <laughs> We might do one episode during the summer. Yeah. We might mm-hmm. do a summer edition. So Maybe an on-location yes, summer edition. Special edition after pre-Zeke? Yeah, probably. Maybe? Pre, pre or... or It would have to be pre. Yeah, pre-baby. Yeah. Uh, post... Are you going on any Which, uh, vacation? Before VBS, so Okay, it'll be so over. post-vacation, <laughs> we should talk a little bit yeah. about that. Which, by the say? way, Zeke... He's uh, shaping up to be a big old baby. He's ready. The doctor said they're going to guess that he'll be about 10 pounds. Oh, poor <laughs> Allison. <laughs> so, wow. Yeah. How heavy were you? I was nine, nine something. You were a big baby. Mm-hmm. Man. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah. Z- I don't know if Zeke's going to make it all the way mid July. <laughs> uh, no, actually, they're projecting around July 11th. I want you to know, I can't do the things you do for VBS, so I'm going to need the Lord to, <laughs> hey, Lord, this request is make sure it happens after VBS. Well, it should. That would so, be a month off. So, <sighs> Wow. Well, that's exciting. Yeah. That, so we're definitely going to have to do a summer edition because there's a lot going to be happening in the Moore household yes. that the people are going to need to hear about. We might just do a fun episode. Yeah. So, well, let's get into it, shall we? Mm-hmm. Today, yes, today we talk about an interesting man. Yeah. Dr. Martin Lloyd Jones, Doctor David Martin Lloyd Jones, David what David name? went by Martin, went by Doc to many people. His name was Doc Lloyd we'll Jones. Talk about that, yeah, Doc Lloyd Jones. Hyphenated even. Yes, 
Um, he had a couple of nicknames, but and we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, interesting that many people deem him the last Puritan. Yes. Very interesting. For a reason. Yeah, and because it was so many years away from most of the Puritans. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, he lived more in a modern era, if you if you want to, con- not, uh, you know, debatable modern, but he was born well, at the very end of the 18th, 1800s, very end of the 19th century. 1899. Yeah. And so uh, we're going to talk about Doc Martin Lloyd-Jones, David Martin Lloyd-Jones, and then we're going to kind of just conclude up with the Puritans. So, uh, again, if you've enjoyed the series, you should let us know. Uh, email us. Let us know that you enjoyed it and maybe some Puritans you'd like to hear more of next year. But let's get into it. Let's put a cap on it for this year with Martin Lloyd-Jones and a conclusion. So yeah. shall we? You want to you want to take some reins on this? Or oh, that's fine, yeah. You already said one of the big things when he was born. Yeah, he was born, I mean, like as close as right at the turn of the century. You talk about it, yeah. <laughs> December. Or, yeah, so December 20th, 1899. <laughs> I mean, I actually, I thought he was born... Like pre, like a lot earlier than that. So yeah. that was news to me. Mm-mm. Yeah. So he was born in Wales. He was not brought up to be a minister. Not at all. Yeah. So he uh, he went to school to be a medical doctor, which is why it's Doctor yes. Martin Lloyd Jones. And that story not, is amazing. Not because he's a doctorate, but because he was an actual yep. doctor. So he was born in 1899, 1913. He was 11 years old. No. I can't do math. That's so depressing. I just said that. <laughs> he was on in open grammar air. school 14 years. 1914, 1917. Yes. Um, but he knew at a very young age that he wanted to pursue medicine. Yeah. Very young age. Um, in 1913 being the year that many would say is when he chose that career path. So w- he had a lot of little things that kind of shaped him and who he was yeah. in his younger years. All like some traumatic things. So well, yeah. uh, 19... 19- 10, 1910. And so his family owned like a grocery shop, like a type store. Yeah, his dad was a grocer. Yep. And they lived within it. I think they probably lived above that one of those kind of deals. Um, but the fire destroyed their home and the shop in 1910. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, the guy, this biography, if you want to read more on Martin Lloyd Jones, this is a really cheap biography. My mom actually got me uh, Earl Davies, really good biography, breaks it up very well. But he adds, that this left a significant impression on his life. Um, yeah. And one of those things being, even though many say Martin didn't know the Lord truly as a savior at this time, uh, him and his family surviving that brought about a recognition of God being God in control yeah. to a degree. Um, and so uh, that happened in 1910 and a few other things that drastically changed him. 1913 medicine. And then, as you were alluding to, medicine was the career path, mm-hmm. um, and a, a big one at that. Yes, yes. So he was a medical student in 1921 at St. Bartholomew's Hospital, and he went on to be the uh, assistant to Sir Thomas Holder, who was the royal physician. So big deal. Lloyd Jones was not only just a doctor, but he was assistant to the royal physician, which was the physician to the monarchy. Yes, big deal. Like <laughs> huge. Big deal. And this is something cool about St. Bartholomew's Hospital. Oldest hospital in England. There you go. Opened up as far back as eleven twenty three. And so like this, this is the most well known medical school. Yeah. Probably let's be honest, in Europe. I mean, if you're going all the way back to eleven twenty three. Yeah. And he went there and he did not just obtain one degree. Mm-hmm. No, <laughs> my man had his, the degrees of MRCS, which I don't know what any of these mean, but just count the ones I list LRCP MB and his BS, which bachelor's of science uh, in medicine. And then as you said, he went on to be the chi- chief clinical assistant. Um, and then later he obtained his doctor of medicine from the degree, uh, university of London at the age of 23. Yeah. Dude's super intelligent. Now, uh, along the same vein. Yeah. Now, do you know where his intelligence comes from? That This was amazing. So, kids, perk your ears when your teachers yell at you is what I'm about to get at. When he was in grade school, his family was very poor. Um, I don't know if you saw that. Mm. The grocery store, they did not do well. Um, his dad sailed to Canada to have a job, had to come back to London because it didn't even wow. work out. But long story short, he kind of got rebuked to a degree by a teacher. Um and that, you know, 
really adjusted him because he knew if he didn't do well in school, he wouldn't get the scholarship that he had to have to get into the next level of schooling right. where his older brother was or brothers. I can't remember if there's two. I think there's, there's two. two. Did um, one die? I think that's one died, which is the flu while, pandemic. Yeah. While he was in college, I think, or mm-hmm. after. Mm-hmm. But, and that was a huge Another instrument reason. in his sanctification. Um, but yeah, because he was rebuked at a young age or disciplined, Many say that's what sparked, hey, I got to do well yeah. because he had to get that degree and he ended up being number one in his class after that happened. Yeah. So just cool how smart this man is, honestly. And yeah. you keep on rolling with it. Let's keep on well, moving. See, so he struggled for two years with a sense of a calling for preaching yeah. after he was a doctor. So he, he spent all this time going to be a medical doctor and he struggled for two years. And in 1927, he returned to Wales after accepting an invitation to minister at a church. Now that that kind of rings uh, familiar to me because I went to Does school it? for nothing of what I'm doing right now. Look at God being God. <laughs> <laughs> Industrial design degree, worked in an engineering firm, yes. got called into ministry, working in a church. <laughs> you? Like, you know, so I, I thought that was uh, mm, It's almost as if God equips the called. It's almost as if. Funny how that works. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. like what I said to the deacons the other day in my ordination council. So I never took one youth pastor class while in college and they had a whole degree for it. <laughs> there you go. I mean, it just God equips the call. Yeah, he does. So Martin Lloyd Jones had the gift set to be a doctor for the rest of his life. Yeah. Like he was the greatest of greats at that time in medicine in his area. Um, and I don't know if it was Lloyd Jones's quote or if it was what people said of him. But that um, although he was great at tending to the physical health of people, there was a burden for the spiritual health. Yeah. And now I remember that distinctly from hearing that from college um, because it was, it kind of, it hit a different tune that, you know, he was a doctor of physical health, but now the Lord was shaping him to be a doctor of spiritual health. I yeah. was like, wow. Yeah. Because that's what we are at times as pastors. Right. Honestly, we're, we're tending to... Uh, I mean, pastor always used to say this. I remember this distinctly. You probably will too, that the church at times is, and maybe all the time is a hospital for souls. Oh yeah. You know, this is where broken people come and need to be encouraged. And so, I mean, it's just really, I think that's really distinct about his life. His whole life was shaped around that. I do have some stuff about how he preached. Yeah, no, that's, that's basically what this leads into. He doesn't have like a... Flavel, yeah, he didn't have a flavel bun and all that kind of horse off. Didn't have a Knox lion in the pulpit yeah, type deal. It's more about his theology. Yes. He moves um, in 1939 um, and was appointed associate pastor of Westminster Chapel, and then he took it fully over in 1943. This is a big deal. Yeah. So now so this is interesting because I feel like um, Martin Lloyd Jones and Pastor Larry would be best friends just because of their preaching style. Yeah. Very much. Well, elaborate if you are. Able so he to. was very. He was known for his expository preaching, and he would take years. So shall we to talk go about through that? a book <laughs> verse by verse? Do you know about Romans? How long? I, I don't think I knew how long. All right, I could be. I could be wrong, and if I am, Lord, forgive me. But he used to teach Romans uh-huh. on Friday night. Yeah, which is where my idea for wanting to do Romans on Friday oh, that's nights funny. came from. Yeah, um, but he taught Romans verse by verse. Yeah, and he—that's how he finished. Like he died before finishing. I think he got through chapter fourteen. And if I'm not mistaken, I remember it was eight to ten years. And he had a reason where what he thought was the reason that for, he for he what? couldn't finish for Romans. Yeah, because. He didn't know, he thought he didn't know personally enough about the joy in the Holy Spirit, which was supposed to be his next sermon based on Romans 14, 17. And so that paired with a surgery complication, he retired. Yeah. Which is very interesting. Honestly, very interesting. Um, Self-awareness there. Talk about conviction. Yeah. Um, Yeah. I, I was trying to find the exact... Uh, oh, amount crazy. of time because it's going to bug me because I used to know it, but I thought it was something outrageous, uh, like fourteen to fifteen. Yeah, it's it's just which Pastor Larry's gone what two years before? Was it two years the longest one? 
I thought Luke was four. Was it no, four? it wasn't four. It was two. It was two. two. That's what I thought. Yeah. Two. So just him being known. <laughs> right. Uh, and he did it Sunday morning, Sunday evening. And Friday was supposed to be a special Bible study time, but it ended up being basically the same thing as his Sundays. Right. Um, but yeah, that's what he was known for. Uh, expository preaching verse by verse, however long that it took. That's And that's something that really set heavy with him. He wanted people to know that. And, th- and that's one of the things that we hit on with the Puritan that makes a lot of people consider him one of the last Puritans or the last Puritan is because of how serious he took the scriptures and how he, how important he felt it was to teach them to everyone. Right. Yeah. He, that's what I, that's what I loved about um, Lloyd Jones is his, there's something you can learn as a pastor in exegetical teaching, expositing the text that Lloyd Jones had a huge gift in. Right. Um, it's not done enough today. Mm-hmm. You know, that's Lloyd Jones is one of the instruments of, or that really encouraged me of you must walk through the text, right? That the text is applicable. We don't need to always pick a topic, find the passage to fit our topic. Oh, absolutely. We need to search the scriptures and allow the Lord to lay on our hearts, what our congregation needs off of exegeting the text. The Puritans had a huge influence on Lloyd Jones. Yes. So that that's why they had an influence on him so much that people consider him to be one. Yes. Um he really, really took to heart the emphasis of the spiritual nature of worship over practices and rituals. The emphasis of gather the gathering of the body of Christ with church discipline being necessary and healthy for the cause of Christ, and the direct application of the word to each person's soul. What do you saying? The spirit of the centrality of God's word. Like that was his main thing. Sola Scriptura. Mm-hmm. He understood that. Speaking of t-shirt. Uh, oh, yeah. T-shirt plug. Five <laughs> souls. Thanks, mom. His beginning was easy, yeah. I feel like, to understand. Uh, a lot of people disagree with the nature of his theology, which is, <laughs> well, that's great. <laughs> we kind of try and explain you know, a thesis a of that. Martin Lloyd Jones in thirty minutes or less. Um, but yeah, he um he saw a revival of interest in Puritans, kinda like what's happening right now in our time. Yes. Um, but it wasn't with people his age, it was with the younger generation, kinda like what's going on right now. Um, and so he took he took that ball and he went with it. He ran with it. And so he took it upon himself to to re energize the teachings of the Puritans. Um, he read a lot of Bunyan, Owen, and Baxter to any young minister that was interested, um, stuff like that. But he also uh, went through the charismatic movement of the 60s, <laughs> which is where a lot of his controversial stuff comes up. Yeah, honestly. He was a proponent of revival, but how there was no formula for revival. You know, we see that a lot nowadays. People think, you know, throw up a tent, get a guest speaker, have a lot of people sing some good emotional songs. Got a lot of people praying down at the altar, Which, and boom, you well, have a revival. We, we think revi- We we think it's an event. Bingo, and we think it's something that man starts. Exactly. Well, see, and that's what he was trying to say. God is sovereign, therefore there cannot be any formula. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so he he talked a lot about that. He insisted that the church needed a revival, not so that the people could come, right? Like simply to be present in a church but that God would be returned to his rightful place in people's living and their thinking. That's right. Which nobody thinks about that when they think of revival. No, not at all. Um, not at all. Yeah, when we think of revival, we think it's uh, let's plan this event, and then God's going to spark about revival because of what we're doing. Yeah. And it's like, no, it's absolutely God does the work of revival through the Spirit off the obedience of his people. Yeah. It's a key word, yeah. obedience. <laughs> Um, and I, I would say Lloyd Jones understood that. Yeah, you know he I was agree. big. What well, because the Puritans understood that, and so he brought about Puritan piety again. That was a huge desire of his. Yeah, um, he did absolutely. And part of that is what led to his biggest controversy mm-hmm. with uh, John Stott. Oh yes, John Stott. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> I I'm reading a book by him right now for school. Two Titans. Yes like each other 
completely disagree on one subject, and it caused a huge, huge rift. What would that subject be? So this was also a time when liberal theology oh, was yeah. up and coming, yes. which liberal theology is that the Bible needs to stay modern, Yeah, as in we need to take the culture into um, consideration and what we teach, not just how right. we teach, yeah, what, but in what we teach. Now, so basically changing the theology to fit the culture. Yes, it, it's exactly what liberal theology is, yeah. is you shape your theology to to fit the culture. Exactly. So that liberal theology of today would be, yeah. oh, you know what? This is what's going on out there. Right. You know, love is love, and we right. shape our theology to be that. Right. Not yeah. a change in style, but nope. a complete change in the it's, it's theology. Heresy. Yeah, it's heresy. It's exactly. Yeah. Now you also got to remember some of the other big names that were going on around the time of Lloyd Jones. I, you, I forget that sometimes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Think about the people that the Lord was awakening. Mm-hmm. C.S. Lewis yeah. was around this time. Right. So, and he had a whole different view than Lloyd Jones as well. <laughs> J.I. Packer is coming about on the scene who J.I. Packer speaks highly Lloyd, Lloyd Jones. Jones loved Lloyd mm-hmm. Jones in his sermons. Um, those are two big names that immediately come to mind. Yeah. Um, James Montgomery Boyce, who you don't know probably a lot about. That's not a well-known name in the Baptist world. He was the pastor of 10th Presbyterian in Pennsylvania, but he was, I believe the one that went through Genesis for three years on Sundays. Yes. Um, that was a big thing of these pastors. You know, it's been a lost art today, but, um, these are big, big names, and they all had little nuggets of similar theology. Yeah. But they're, it, it's funny how all of them are distinctly different. All right, now let me hit you with a big one, Billy Graham. Yeah. So, I, And they're all yeah, in different coming. places, too, Yeah, every single one of them. And so, yeah, two titans, John Stott and Lloyd-Jones, absolutely. Well, because Lloyd-Jones, being the last Puritan mm-hmm. that we believe him to be, yeah. said, hey, you people just need to leave the church. You don't need to be in the church yep. that has any trace of this. You guys got to leave ministers leave. If your congregation has any trace mm-hmm. of it and Stott stands up and he wasn't, he wasn't even supposed to speak at, at where Lloyd Jones was speaking. Stott gets up and says, no, we are to stay. Right. Those two guys. <laughs> What's funny. And two of them have, they both have such, Huge influential works. How about and, this? And they both kind of referenced each yes. other yeah. many times. Well, okay, application point. You can differ on things and be huge partners in ministry. Still respect. Um, because John Stott's commentary on Romans is one of the favored by none other than John Piper. Yeah. And then the Romans exposition commentaries yeah. are the favored of all of your big Puritan boys of today, Joel Beakey, mm. Ligon Duncan, uh, your man uh, from Scotland. How did I forget his name right there? That's depressing. How did I just forget his name? Just completely oh, left me. Oh, like a today's... Sinclair Ferguson. There it is. Scrooge McDuck. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, but it's it's just funny how the Lord uses that to shape his people. Yeah. Um, but Lloyd-Jones, I just... I'm looking forward to watching the Puritan documentary because they actually talk a lot about him. Yes. Um, plug for anyone that we should, wants to we do We still that. have to do Puritan pizza. Puritan pizza. Yes. <laughs> um, um, I want to read some of his quotes. Uh, now, he's got some good ones. He's got some now, good before ones. Before you read his, because that's how you should end, Okay. I got to read one from Al Mohler on Martin Lloyd-Jones because okay. this is one I remember looking at. I was like, wow. This is what Mar- or Albert Moeller, uh, president of Southern Seminary, says about Martin Lloyd-Jones. What, he was one of the titanic figures of the 20th century Christianity. What now sets him apart is the fact that his writing sermons and other messages are even more influential now, more than two decades after his death, than when he engaged in such a massive ministry at Westminster Chapel. Yeah, I feel like with this episode with Lloyd-Jones, it, it feels like we've been all over the place, but it's because... You'll get to know him best through his writings. Lloyd Jones is one of those people. He's not so much yeah. a historical figure right. as he is an influential. This has got different writer. info from him. Right. If you, I will tell you this: if you want to know Lloyd Jones best, you need to read Ian H. Murray mm. because it was that, uh, Ian Murray was Lloyd Jones's assistant at one time, if I'm not mistaken. Banner of Truth guy. He writes 
biographies is what his specialty is. Mm. Best biography on Jonathan Edwards is Ian H. Murray, but he has a two volume set on Lloyd Jones mm. and they're, they're very Let's affordable, but yeah, we'll add that to my list. Uh, I'm going to probably which purchase I, it today, which I updated just today. Look at you. <laughs> um, but yeah, it has been everywhere, but at the same time, that's, when you don't have a historical to, figure, right? That's just kind of you how jump. It is. Ar- you have to jump. Well, around and hopefully life. this is not something that you watch or listen to, and you're like, okay, well, I know everything there is to know. Well, no, hopefully this just generates interest so that you dive in yourself. If anything, Lloyd Jones should influence you as a believer to go. I want to have the desire that if the Lord takes me out of everything I prepared for and throws me to a full time ministry field, yeah, I'm obedient. Absolutely. Like that's a huge application, church members. If yeah. you're not in ministry. And the Lord's like, you know what? Skirt, stop where you're at. I'm throwing you into the ministry. You're going to be obedient. Yeah. Because that's huge. Lloyd Jones' is obedience is what led to everything else. Go yeah. ahead. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's good. Sorry, I could preach that. Yeah, it, and it will preach too. Let's get it. Coming up. <laughs> uh, so I have three quotes. Two of them are good little zingers. Okay. The zinger. Do you think you deserve forgiveness? If you do. You are not a Christian. Oh, oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> do you think you deserve forgiveness? Yeah. If you do, then you are not a Christian. Yeah. Okay. The ultimate test of our spirituality is the measure of our amazement at the grace of God. All right. I'm going to have to hear that one again. Go <laughs> ahead. The ultimate test of our spirituality is the measure of our amazement at the grace of God. Oh, yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. Wow. Okay. And this one's long. Is this the gut punch, though? Is this I the thought one? the first one was the gut punch, though. No, the first one does go, uh, and then that second yeah. one's like, ah. ah. Yeah. <laughs> it is grace at the beginning and grace at the end, so that when you and I come to lie upon our deathbeds, the one thing that should comfort and help and strengthen us, there is the thing that helped us in the beginning. Not what we have been, not what we have done, but the grace of God and Jesus Christ yes. our Lord. The Christian life starts with grace. It must continue with grace. It ends with grace. Yes. Grace, wondrous grace. By the grace of God, I am what I am. Yet not I, but the grace of God, which was within me. I've heard that one before, yeah. that full quote. That's mm, that's good. Mm-hmm. So, tr- he, yeah, grace was a big thing. Big uh, thing, yeah. as it should be for all believers. As it should be. Wow. So, Puritans. You just put a cap on it, man. Well, I will I mean, just it's uh, depressing. Just to conclude fully. I don't want it to end. book end. I don't want it to. I found a great article called Puritans: Why We Need Them. I thought, man, I think I know of great. this article. Where Probably is it? Do. What website? I think it was the Gospel Coalition. Yeah, yeah, I love it. Go I was ahead. like, man, this is great. So I just kind of summarized them mm-hmm. just for our conclusion. One. They are mature in ways we are not. Amen. Yeah. I was like, yes, so true. Spiritually mature. Ow, but yes. <laughs> Get a Band-Aid for that. Yeah. Uh, they understood the deep sinfulness of the human heart. Yes. That's when we did our Puritan series back in the fall. We talked just a few weeks on the Puritans. That's yeah. the biggest, one of the greatest points I emphasized. Well, I'll tell you one of the things, and it, it's not like a recitation within my prayer in the mornings, yeah. but it's something that I just want to emphasize. So I pray it. Right. Um, one of the things I pray in the morning is help me feel the weight of sin. Yes. Help me feel the heaviness of sin. Because that's one thing that if you forget or you don't actively think about, right. it, that's prone to wander, Lord, I feel it kind of a mm, moment. Come you know what I mean? Yeah. So, all right. They knew their best life was later. We talked about that. Yeah, well, they had an eternal perspective. Yeah, yeah. delayed gratification. Absolutely. They viewed their family as a little church. They were deeply committed to sharpening their homes. Mm. Uh, that's huge for me, and it will be for you. But for me right now, like, that's huge because one of the most important things to me is my kids. Yeah. And my spiritual or the spiritual future of my kids. Spiritual health of them, absolutely. Yeah. And so... While it's ultimately the Lord, not us, who does that work, we still have the responsibility to plant that seed. We mm-hmm. still have the responsibility to lead them while we can. Yeah. Now, it's kind of like the uh, Jonathan Edwards moment, and it took him a while, but that's still our responsibility. 
right. to, to raise up our family. Well, the Lord uses parents as an instrument. Exactly. To, first of all, also display himself as the father to his children. Yeah. Um, in Proverbs, you know, train up a child in the way sh- you should. Sh- you- I can't even say it. <laughs> and the way you should go. Thank you. When wow, I stuttered there. He will not depart from it. Um, but that's so true. Absolutely. Um, y'all are instruments of directing them towards Christ. Right. So absolutely. Uh, another one is, they understood God is always present and knew it vividly. God actively in the midst. Yeah. Something so, yeah. that's so vital but something understand. that's so easy to forget too. Yes, it, it, not especially not forget, today. But let it wander to the back. Especially of our minds. in today's culture, it's easy to put on the bottom shelf that yeah. God dwells within me through we, the Spirit as a believer. Yes, absolutely. They understood that. Mm-hmm. I will say that because I would, you know, today is everything is pushes you to look to everything else to satisfy your loneliness. Yeah. Instead of go, no, I'm not actually alone. Yeah. Something I have to learn. Yep. Uh, and the last one, their contentment was in Christ, and Christ was all they ever needed. Oh, there it is. Contentment <laughs> in Christ. Yep. There's a difference in contentment and complacency, people. Yeah. To be content in Christ means to be satisfied in him alone. Yeah. Wow, that's a good article. You said it's Gospel Coalition, yeah. right? I remember. I think I've come across that one. Mm-hmm. Um, and, hey, check it out. I w- here's what I would say as we conclude, too, on my end of things. Um you know, the Puritans have become a, a love of mine uh, because I desire to walk like they did. I Absolutely. really, they they just had such a, the spiritual maturity is really states it. I mean, I can't even put it in better words, but they did have such a spiritual maturity that we have really not seen since. I, I mean, you know, yeah. I love some of the pastors of today. But man, the writings of the Puritans. It, and I think that's why cyclically you see a resurgence of interest in the Puritans because I think we go through these moments like Lloyd Jones saw mm-hmm. of it's just complete spiritual plateau, if yeah. not a dip down. Right. But then you get a generation who comes up, or a few generations. And they just see the complete lack of authenticity, the complete lack of any kind of spiritual awareness. And they're like, this cannot be right. I can just go on a list. I could go on a tangent all day long I on know. this. I have a couple of different things that come to my head, but we do not have the time for it. Unfortunately, but we will leave you yeah. with that. Wow. You know, I, I think real quick, another episode we'll have to do come fall. We'll have to do our worship one round two. Three. Oh, is it number three? Number three. Can't keep up. For worship episode number three. Yeah. Lord knows what will, will happen this summer. Um, when we come back, we'll have a new person in. We will. Uh, we will. Staff. We will have transitioned from a pastor that's been here 35 years who has given his everything to literally, the ministry. Literally given it. Mm-hmm. And uh, we'll have a new. <laughs> we'll have a new chief the, uh, for new leading. New senior pastor, first time in 35 years. For leading our staff and all. Yeah, so things will look different. Yeah. Um, Lord knows what's going to... You'll have a new baby. That's I'll that's have scary. a new baby. I'll be the same. I'll still be wearing skin. Nothing's changing in my world. I'll be wearing skinny jeans and all. <laughs> drinking say coffee. Say that. Don't say nothing change. We'll see what happens. It's just inviting change to happen. See what happens. But we will have us one summer episode for sure. Yeah. And uh, for Coffeewood Vern listeners that are like, hey, I need something to listen to throughout the summer, I'm going to be putting out some gut punches uh, throughout the summer. Um, yeah, go ahead and give you're them gonna, a little instrument. You're going to be putting out some what? Gut punch. Oof. Oh, yes. You're going to be putting out some what? Gut punch. <laughs> I'm talking about, man. Well, yes, we're going to be talking about metal and theology all summer. Oh man, the <laughs> breakdown was coming. I don't want to play. You the whole knew thing. it, but <laughs> good stuff. I'm excited. Uh, I'm excited about some of the stuff, and so uh, we look forward to coming back in the fall with you guys. We'll kick back off in August. Uh, we're gonna definitely start once school starts back, but we're gonna take some time away to prepare, enjoy our summers. Hey, enjoy your summer. If you uh, if you're not plugged into the local church, come hang out with us. We would love to have you here. Um, We thank you for all the support always over season two and season one. Cannot wait to get back in here. But until then, Shabbat Shalom, my people. This has been Coffee with Vern season two. (laughs) 